The scenes of Belle Isle you just saw there, the Canada geese swimming without leaves on the trees yet, but they're coming, and the sign for the Belle Isle Nature Center at the Detroit Zoo facility there on the island. We are going to visit both those places today as we talk about conservation and what you can do as a member of the Belle Isle community. Hello, welcome to the Great Lakes Now Watch Party. I'm Sandra Swoboda, the Program Director. I'm your host today in this watch party where you, our audience, get to ask us questions live. I have some great guests today to answer them. What we're going to cover today is a look at a conservation project on Belle Isle, research into the mud puppies. And then we're going to connect that to Earth Day. That's later this month in April, where there are events all around the Great Lakes region that celebrate and protect Earth and make us better stewards of our Great Lakes and the environment. And we're going to hear about some new events at Belle Isle. So with that, I would like to invite you, our audience, to tell us where you're watching from today. Whether you're on Facebook or our YouTube stream, give us a little comment in one of those sections there and tell us where you're watching from. We like to do the shout outs. We like to hear where you're coming from and it helps us pick topics for future shows. Also, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, if you could give us a like, we have a little campaign going on to get to 10,000 likes and our team made bets on when we would reach those. So I'm just saying, the faster we get the 10,000 likes, one of us will win. So anyway, with that, um, I would also like to welcome our co-host today. If you're a regular watcher of this First Friday series, you know it's presented by Great Lakes Now at Detroit Public Television, as well as WDET, Detroit's NPR station, the Belle Isle Conservancy, and Planet Detroit. Here we have a map from around the region of where our partners and co-hosts are joining today. That dot in the Upper Peninsula there is WNMU, our public radio partner. Uh, I'm sorry, public TV partner up there. They also have a public radio station. WQLN in Erie, Pennsylvania, WPBS in Watertown, New York. Other public media partners, the Michigan Learning Channel and Tara at Detroit Public Television streaming on her Facebook page. Check it out. Uh, also, Circle of Blue, our partner in the Great Lakes News Collaborative and connected to today's topics, the Detroit River Canadian Cleanup, Amplify Outside, and the Belle Isle Nature Center at the Detroit Zoo. So there you go. Our regional approach to Great Lakes issues, but centered around Belle Isle and the Detroit River and Southeast Michigan. So with that, let's get right to it. Our first guest you're going to meet today is going to tell us everything we didn't even know we wanted to know about mud puppies. Mark Vassallo joins us and he is the amphibian department supervisor at the Detroit Zoo. Mark, welcome to your first Great Lakes Now Watch Party. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I went through a lot in that introduction. Belle Isle, Great Lakes, Earth Day mud puppies put it all together for us mud puppies are so i'll give you a sentence the starter mud puppies are fill in the blank and their importance to the great lakes is certainly so mud puppies are vertebrates so they are animals of course not plants they have a a spinal cord they are amphibians so they are cold-blooded and they are from the order caudata so they're considered to be salamanders so they have external gills and they're fully aquatic and spend their whole lives in the water. So why are mud puppies important? Um, one of the reasons they're important is because they can be indicators of uh, ecological health. So um, the health of the island, the health of the waterways, um, since they have um, a unique way of interacting with their environment, they have very porous skin. Um, you can see in the photo there, they're kind of slimy, but their skin is actually a very unique part of their physiology. So they're very much um, like a sponge. They take water in through their skin. They take oxygen in through their skin sometimes as well as their gills. So they're very much uh, vulnerable to any pollutants or toxins in the water. So basically, um, if mud puppy populations are doing well and we're keeping track of them, we can say that in general, um, the ecology of Belle Isle and um, the surrounding waters um, at least could be considered to be um, uh, doing well as well. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about your research into those, but let's let's talk about your job. I always like to hear why people like their jobs and how they got their jobs. So if one if someone wants to be a, an amphibian supervisor like you do and supervise the amphibians, is that your job at the Detroit Zoo? Well, I mean, you could say that mainly people, though, people who supervise 
I supervise people who supervise the amphibians, I guess you could say. So it's an interesting chain like that. But um, yeah, it's, I guess I got involved, um, you know, I got interested in the natural world very early on. Um, you know, my, my father took me camping. Um, I grew up downriver Detroit, so I found amphibians by the railroad tracks. I was fascinated by them. Um, you know, they were in very odd areas, kind of in these interfaced urban, urban settings. And I was kind of interested in how they were able to survive. And the more I learned about how sensitive they are, the more I was interested in the relationship between, you know, amphibians and, and you know, I guess, urban sprawl and, and some of these zones, these urban wilderness zones. Yeah. So speaking of the urban wilderness, we have some people chiming in, telling us where they're watching from. And some of them are urban areas, some are not. So I want to look at our list. Traverse City, Michigan. Hello up there. Southgate and Allen Park. Uh, one of them has the one of those viewers has the same last name as you, Mark. So uh, <laughs> that might be my dad. Yeah. <laughs> got just got some family. We dads are always joining. We love that. Uh, and we my also mom, have sure. Detroit, the Gold Coast, right across there from Belle Isle, and Port Elgin, Ontario. And that person, Kim, there says points out she's on Lake Huron. So I'm thinking there's a little Great Lakes pride going on. Looks that way. Yeah. Okay. So, Mark, you mentioned in describing the mud puppies that they're what you called an indicator species. So what does that mean to be an indicator species uh, in the Great Lakes? So I guess um, in general, uh, indicator species, um, like I mentioned before, can be um, kind of a bit of a, they use the analogy of the canary in the coal mine. You know, uh, miners used to bring canaries into the mines to, to sense, you know, toxins or gases in the air before that human beings were able to sense them and kind of being an early warning system for danger. So in a way, mud puppies um, and other indicator species, um, if we're keeping track of them, we're able to tell if the, if the populations aren't doing well, um, that means that there could be um, something off in the, the general ecology of the area, or there could be something um, going on to be detrimental to the environment at large. Yeah. So keeping track of them, that is the segue into your research and the mud puppy survey that you do. So tell us about that project. And we do have a little footage from the field. We came, we sent our cameras out and uh, shot you, as we say, in the video business. So we're going to roll a little bit of that video and have you talk us through the mud puppy survey that I, yeah, I mean, I go to Belle Isle all the time. I did not know you were surveying the mud puppies out there. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is a long-term survey. The Detroit Zoological Society has been going um, going hard at since 2010 or so. Um, basically, we survey um, mainly in the coldest parts of the year. So mud puppies prefer, you know, kind of late um, late fall, early spring, mid winter kind of a situation. So they like the lower temperatures. Um, they come closer to shore. So you can see we have these minnow traps. Um, we're able to deploy those traps and capture mud puppies effectively without injuring them in any way. Um, we kind of take them out and we flag them and we pull them in the day after we throw them. Um, and what we do is we we process them, we take them in. So we look at how big they are. We look at, um, you know, we look at their weight, we look at their length, we look for any abnormalities in their, in their health. Um, we also do environmental monitoring. So we're gonna be, um, monitoring the water quality, looking at um, things like dissolved oxygen, uh, ammonia, nitrates, nitrites, also phosphates and chlorine. So we're kind of keeping track of the overall water quality of the area. Um, and uh, basically what we do is we bring in a mud puppy, we process it like I explained, and then we scan it with a uh, pit tag reader to see if we had um, injected it with a um, basically a tracking device prior to us recapturing it. If it doesn't have a, one of those um, those little pit tags, they call them. It's a passive integrated transponder. If it doesn't have those, we'll inject one of those into them. Um, and uh, it's a very small little incision by the base of the tail there. And what that tells us is if we re recapture that animal, we can see things like how, you know, how it's been eating, how it's been living, how its health has been affected since the last time we've seen that animal. And um, this, of course, is, is important just because of uh, keeping um, track of this, this amphibian um, is like I mentioned before, it's a, it's a big indicator of the overall general ecology of the area. Big data meets amphibians. Is that what <laughs> we have going on there? All right. Well, what we have going on on some of our Facebook pages are people watching from all over. So Kathleen in Fraser, Michigan, thanks for joining. Lake Erie weighs in. Justine is in Cleveland. Another Jeff Chalmers, that's Detroit's east side. That's John. 
And Mark, when you were show, we were looking at that footage and saw that snow. We had a viewer from Texas tell us they're watching on the Detroit Zoo Facebook page. So let's address as my cat walks across the screen. Let's <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that cold weather. Uh, this is a shout out to you, Texas. We're going to show you our snow. Why? Uh, why are these surveys done in the cold weather there at Belle Isle? Yeah, so um, come late fall and the beginning of winter there, um, mud puppies um, are going into their breeding season. So right when everybody else is leaving the beach at Belle Isle and, and going home and turning up the heat, um, mud puppies are, are heading out, trying to find mates, um, trying to, um, you know, copulate and lay eggs. And um, that's a lot of what they do. That's why they're a little easier to catch this time of year. As you can see, um, myself and my my wonderful co-workers here um, work in the axe and right now and you can see um, that's grace and that's maya those are two people i work with and they're they're attempting to free one of the traps from the ice so when we go in and throw the traps overnight a lot of the times we'll get a lot of the ice will uh <laughs> a lot of the ice will freeze over and we'll have to do this fun break dance that i'm doing right now um, on the screen to get some of those traps free so um, you can see all of the really high tech methods I'm employing to free the traps from the ice. <laughs> but um, that is um, that is the nature of the beast when it comes to um, trapping mud puppies. They prefer the cold water. Um, they thrive in that water. You know, usually the dissolved oxygen contents a little bit higher in colder water. So, you know, we're, we're trying to find them when um, when they're cruising around looking for mates. And unfortunately, on this trip, we didn't get any. But we can talk more about that later. Yeah, we saw the mud puppies at the beginning. So if anybody wants to see what a mud puppy looks like, <laughs> again, put it in the chat. We'll put the pictures back out there. And we are going to have Mark on standby for a while here during the watch party. So if you have any questions specific about mud puppies or big data in mud puppies or mud, mud puppy mating or break dancing scientists, I don't sure. know, there's a lot in there, Mark. Yeah, any, anything you want to throw at me, I think I'm ready for it now. So. Okay, well, I want to throw at you a question that's going to help get us to our next guest who is going to tell us about Earth Day so, and, and the activities around the Detroit River. So you are a scientist, you are out there doing research, but for us mere mortals that go to the island, what's kind of one thing you want us all to be aware of that comes from your background in science, but also as kind of a resident of the Great Lakes? What's something you want us to take away about conservation towards the Great Lakes as we all think about Earth Day coming up later this month. Sure, that's a great segue. You no, know, um, I guess as a as a person whose family's enjoyed the island over generations, you know, my my father, my father's father, you know, they spent time fishing there. I guess um just in general being um being conscientious of, of the animals and plants that live there and and um I guess respecting the fact that it is a bit of an island of biodiversity in this great urban sprawl and it's it's really a gem and you know, there's so many people that are working hard to, um, you know, maintain the island and maintain that biodiversity and to support those groups that are doing so. You know, I guess me specifically, fishermen, if you're catching mud puppies, you know, know that they're actually helping you out. They're eating invasive species like the round goby. Um, so, you know, just, you know, you can cut the line and release them. Um, you don't no need to do any harm to them. And in the same way, um, you know, just um, being conscientious of of the wildlife on the island and, 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 you know, our imprint and our effect on that, that space. Okay. Well, you gave me the perfect segue to talk about the people that care about the island, but then an audience question came in. So Mark, you get a little more screen time. Okay. Kim wants to know what she can do to find the mud puppies in Lake Huron. Sure. So, I mean, I guess the way that you could um, look around for mud puppies, I mean, um, you could just flip logs and flip rocks kind of on the shore. Um, your most likely chance would be to see them um, late fall. So you might look like, uh, you know, might look a little bit like this, but um, that's usually when you'd find them underneath, you know, shallow rocks and places like that. Um, you know, you wouldn't be able to trap per se without a permit. They are protected. You know, well, they're a species of special concern. So we have permits. That's why we're able to use traps, but just for fun, if you wanted to flip rocks and see if you could find some by the shore, that might be a possibility. All right. And being careful if you're doing it on the ice. Absolutely. <laughs> Highly trained scientists. Okay, Mark, we're going to keep you around for more if we get some audience questions, but thanks for joining us. And with that, let me go to one of the people, as Mark kind of mentioned, that cares about Belle Isle and does work out there. She is making a return visit to the Great Lakes Now watch parties. 
Genevieve Rattray is with the Bell with Bell Isle Conservancy. She's the director of environmental initiatives and affairs. Did I do that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Genevieve, welcome back. Thank you. I love being here with you, Sandy. It's good to see you and it's great to be here with all your guests today. Yeah. And speaking of which, one of them is watching from Alaska today. So lots oh, wow. of Great Lakes love. Uh, I should have asked Mark if we have mud puppies in Alaska, but um, Mark, you can tell me in the chat later on. Uh, okay. So Genevieve, we are here to help people learn how to love Belle Isle and the Detroit River even more. We did this last year. We're doing it again. It's an annual watch party. Earth Day is this month. What is Earth Day? Give us a little bit of the history there on Belle Isle and Detroit and the Earth Day activities. Earth Day is personally one of my favorite days of the year on Belle Isle. It is, we host spring cleanup every April in honor of Earth Day, which is a legacy event that's been taking place since the 1970s. And it's really transformed and adopted our anti-litter campaign, Keep Belle Isle Beautiful. So what we do for Earth Day is we ask the community to come out and participate in a cleanup where we really help um, so you know throughout the winter uh, we're not out there as much due to the cold weather and and litter still is taking place so we kind of get out there once the weather turns in honor of Earth Day and protecting the park and the waterways. Um, we are also part of a larger binational coalition called the Detroit River Coalition, which is hosting an entire weekend of Earth Day activities. Uh, the Detroit River Coalition is a resource hub promoting cross-sector collaboration in both the U.S. and Canada. To shout out to all of our binational watch, uh, viewers today, it's very exciting. We're the only binational coalition that coordinates interested groups and people for the purpose of litter removal to protect um, Belle Isle, the Detroit River, and the Detroit River coastline in both Ontario and Michigan. And we really have some great activities taking place um, starting April 9th in Ontario with a cleanup and going all through Earth Day weekend with Saturday, April 23rd being a coordinated cleanup along the U.S. side of the Detroit River. Uh, and then the next day in Windsor, back to Windsor again across the bridge for a tree planting. So Genevieve, one of the things we talked about last year and our audience uh, out there might have some questions if they want to do their own Earth Day event or get involved. So give us your best tips for planning an Earth Day event. If people want to do something in their own community, give us three hot Absolutely. tips for Absolutely. I always promote and do myself walking around the neighborhood and picking up litter. So you can just grab some gloves. I have used just kitchen tongs in the past, grab a bag and walk around. I think once you start seeing the litter, you're going to notice it everywhere. So it's always fantastic if you have children, if you just want to meet up with some friends to go around your own community and beautify it. And what you'll be beautifying on the on the Belle Isle cleanup is the environment there at Belle Isle, where the mud puppies live. We're getting <laughs> questions from the audience. We have a request, show me a mud puppy. Tammy, our engineer, can you show us a mud puppy for, uh, for I think it's Robbie. There you go, Robbie, there's the mud puppy. So if you have questions about them, we have Mark in the background and he can answer them. So Belle Isle cleanup day, do it for the mud puppies, Genevieve, right? Absolutely. Do it for all of our fantastic aquatic life. All right. So what is new for this Earth Day? It's a, it's a decades old event, but you have a new event, I'm told, on Belle Isle this year. I am really excited that we are hosting an art exhibition called Art in Earth. So we've collaborated with incredible artists this year and we'll celebrate community, our local art community, environmentalists all coming together to honor Earth Day on Belle Isle and along the binational Detroit River coastline and throughout the Great Lakes region. So our goal with this exhibition was to leverage art in our really incredible and strong artist community to evoke conversation and create that connection between our daily lives, our communities, the environment, and environmental justice. So the, the art exhibition, it will open on Earth Day at the Belle Isle Aquarium, and it will run the entire weekend. So you can come down on Saturday, April 23rd, participate in the cleanup, and then go see the fantastic pieces that will be on exhibition. Okay, so we are going to drop the links in the chat so people can get more information um, about that. I mean, you know, everyone can Google, but we like to we like to give the audience what we 
think they want. So tell us what you want. We'll give it to you. No, not everything. But we will give you the link for Earth Day events at Belle Isle, hosted by Belle Isle Conservancy and the Detroit River Coalition. And now standing by patiently is one of the artists who is going to be part of that show. So Ian Solomon is Detroit based, used to be a journalist. This is his first Great Lakes Now watch party. So Ian, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, and congratulations on your piece being selected for the first art fair, Earth Day art fair there at Belle Isle. Thank you. I was I saw it and I was like, oh, I have to apply. This is right up my alley. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Okay. So that was a good segue. So you say it's right up your alley. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your work and how you got to that place where environmental photography and artwork is up your alley. Absolutely. Uh, have you, as you've already mentioned, uh, I used to be a journalist. Uh, political journalist because I'm all about community. I'm all about community organization and just getting to, you know, what do people need? And I actually fell in love with nature. I'm a huge outdoor recreationist. I love hiking. I love kayaking, you name it. And lucky enough, I was born in Michigan of all places to uh, kind of, you know, facilitate that love. And what I found was uh, a lot of black Michiganders are not enjoying uh, the Michigan wilderness as much as they could be. And so I wanted to do something to kind of fix that. And so I started the organization Amplify Outside and you can follow us, uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everything. And um, I started that organization to increase um, black representation and black access to Michigan's outdoors. Um, and in doing that work, I also make art about it. Um, the great part about the art is that you don't have the limitations. So when we talk about access to the outdoors, um, there's a lot of limits that uh, Black Michiganders have to enjoying that. And when I make my art, I don't have to worry about that access. Um, so moving on through that, I uh, started collaging um, Polaroid landscape photos because I love Polaroid photos uh, with digital portraiture of Detroiters, uh, Black Detroiters, because in the art, I can just take a picture of someone and put them in the wilderness. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole campaign and organization around it. Yeah, so we saw there are some samples of your work and a little preview, a little sneak preview of the art show. So I wanna go back to what you were saying of lack of black representation in the outside world, I guess, so to speak. Uh, tell us more background about how you came to understand that being a big issue and something that you wanted to work on. Definitely. Uh, I think it really came when I started asking the question, you know, why aren't I seeing more people that look like me uh, outside? I go all over the country. I actually lived in uh, L.A. for a while, so I hiked a lot on the West Coast. I spent a lot of time in Denver um, as well as Michigan, and I found, you know, I was plenty of times the only person that looked like me on the trail. And when looking back and asking why, it was clear that there was a long history, um, a long problematic history when it comes to Black Americans and land usage. And of course, we can trace that all the way back to chattel slavery, which was the obvious, you know, not a positive uh, interaction with land. Um, coming all the way up to more present day, you think about uh, Black people in urban areas, you know, we're redlined, we don't have proper transportation, so uh, public transportation, things of that nature. Um, it's a real access issue. And I think a lot of the narrative is Black people aren't interested in the outdoors, or it's a white people thing. I know we all hear that a lot. Um, but it's not an interest thing, uh, it's an access thing. And so I wanted to attack that. And one of the easiest things I found that I could do was attack representation and just show myself outside, uh, enjoying the outdoors. Yeah, so, you know, for people who are intimidated, and I mean, this is everybody, you know, a long road trip or having the right gear to wear on the trail or, you know, uh, our, our Isle Royal so far away and so hard to get to. <laughs> this is your chance to sell Belle Isle and Detroit parks to all of us. You know, right. <laughs> we're so, it's, it's right here. That's really for everybody. It's right here in our city. Mm -hmm. How can we all help people understand? What, what can we all do that will help people understand and increase access and appreciation for these open public nature spaces? Absolutely. The best thing you can do is go to them, um, enjoy them yourselves and show yourself um, enjoying that land. I found that, again, with representation, 
Um, it was when I started just taking videos, um, taking pictures of the places I was going that I found that my community around me and their extension of their community, you know, through social media, became really interested in what I was doing, interested in the parks, interested in the camping. Uh, so the best thing that you can do is show people that you're out there too and you're having a fantastic time doing it because people want to do what they think will be fun. And when they see other people having fun, they're automatically drawn to it. Yeah, I was really, you know, in Detroit, I guess I could say I was really surprised when I moved here of the part, you know, between Belle Isle and Rouge Park and a lot of the neighborhood parks and even the vacant land becomes nature. We had a watch party show about coyotes <laughs> in the city and, um, you know, butterflies and birds and squirrels we did in February. All of those pieces are available within our city and it's kind of a starting place that isn't the big you know, showcased national parks that are fortunately here in Michigan, but also, you know, sometimes very far away. Um, what your group, tell us more about Amplify Outside. What's the work you're doing and how could people be involved or support you? Yeah, so Amplify Outside is an organization uh, I started about two years ago. We've really been uh, hitting the ground running lately, but it's essentially uh, to increase representation and increase access. Um, the access part is a little more difficult. So, you know, we really do focus on the representation as of right now. Um, and what I do with that is just making travel videos um, to different places around Michigan, uh, to Belle Isle itself, uh, and post that on Instagram as well as TikTok. TikTok's like our big one. Uh, that's where I make all the videos. Um, but essentially, I found that a lot of the uh, barriers to access that Black Michiganders face of getting outside is just not knowing what's out there is being um, completely, you know, in the dark as far as what's out there, how to get to it, what it takes to enjoy these experiences. So I started Amplify Outside to start documenting all of my hiking trips, all of my camping trips, um, as well as other <laughs> friends. So to show people like, hey, this is here and this is exactly how you do it. So a lot of the videos will have a complete breakdown like, hey, this is how much gas, this is how much money, and this is what we did when we got there, and this is how you can do it too. That's great. We're going to share those out. Um, okay, so I'm I'm looking for audience questions. Anything about Earth Day for Genevieve? Anything about Amplify Outside or how to carry Ian's message to your own community? Put them in the chat now, going once, going twice, because I've got to bring Mark back because we have questions about the mud puppies. So, Mark, uh, from the, oh, there went Ian. Well, Ian and Genevieve are still here, just so you know, viewers. Oh, there they go. Bring them back in. All right. So thank you, Tammy, our engineer. Um, now it's really a watch party. It's not just two of us. Now it's the Belle Isle Lovers watch party here. So uh, let me go. I promised the mud puppy question. Let me find it here. Okay. This is from John. Would you find mud puppies in the canals of the Fox and Connor Creeks? Those are creeks that become canals and neighborhoods on Detroit's east side. That for those of you from out of the region, it's a really cool neighborhood. We should do a watch party from kayaks there, Mark. Maybe we could go out and do that. I will um, show up for that. And if even Ian can come too, we'll do the next one. But anyway, all right. <laughs> do you find mud puppies there? You know what? That's a really good question, actually. Um, I was recently kind of in the, the area around the east side there, and I do think about that. I've never sampled there. Um, I don't know of anybody who has. I know there would have, have to be certain parameters in the water. You know, it'd have to be pretty good water quality in that area. It could differ from the river itself, but that is a very good question, John. Absolutely. I'm not sure, though. I couldn't answer that with certainty, but that's, um, yeah, that, those are the questions that I think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Because of the, you know, it's all connected, right? Can you see mud puppies? You get to water yeah. quality, neighborhoods, everything. Yeah. Um, Genevieve, we have a uh, viewer from Bruce County and uh, she picks up litter on her hikes and she does want to do something for Earth Day in her area. So just know that you inspired someone today, mm -hmm. Genevieve, here in our watch party. Um, and then we have, Rita, I think it's Rita coming in on the WDET Facebook page, and she wants us to know she has seen a mud puppy. So <laughs> taking observations of your environment, and I think kind of what Ian said, like, tell us, tell us you're doing it. Share your stories, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Well, I, unless we have any last minute questions coming in, I think I'd like to thank all of our guests and our audience. And right there, we have one. It's from Justine. Um, Genevieve, I'm not sure you can answer this one, but Justine is wondering 
of if there are any improvements to public transit to get to Belle Isle in the works. Um, and maybe that actually that's really for any of you uh, getting an access and making things easier. There, there is Detroit bus service mm -hmm. there, but there could be more. Have any of you heard of discussions to, uh, to, to amplify that? <laughs> I have not. I do often see the DDAT bus um, on its route. So very, it's a very frequent and often bus that I, I see when I'm there, but I have not heard of um, other things actively in the works at this time. Okay. Justine, we'll check that out. And uh, if we find out anything more, we'll put it in the chat and tag you there. Um, so, okay, with that, uh, Ian Solomon is a Detroit artist. You can see his work at the first art fair that will be in held in conjunction with Earth Day on Belle Isle. Ian, thanks for joining us and tell us one more time about Amplify and where to find you. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was a pleasure uh, to find Amplify outside. We are on any uh, social media, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and it's just at Amplify Outside. And our icon is an A and an O, you'll see it. Thank you. Genevieve Rattre with Belle Isle Conservancy. Genevieve, one more time about Earth Day events and Belle Isle volunteerism. Absolutely. Please come out and see Ian and our other incredible artists at our exhibition, Art Plus Earth, the Belle Isle Aquarium, kicking off Earth Day, April 22nd through the entire weekend. And then of course, our cleanups all month long in Ontario and Michigan um, and the coordinated ones taking place that Saturday of Earth Day, April 23rd. All right, and Mark Vassallo from the Detroit Zoo. The amphibian work, is it going on and people can see you out on Belle Isle? Should they keep an eye out or are there other projects this summer for you? Yeah, so we, we wrapped up the mud puppy survey for, for this year, um, but we are gonna be out there again, you know, next, uh, next fall and we, frequently, you know, talk to people who are coming by wondering what we're doing. And, um, you know, we're, we're very willing to talk mud puppies with anybody who wants to chat. So yeah, and you can always check the Detroit Zoo website or the Detroit Zoo Facebook for updates. I do blog posts and, and things like that about our progress and any interesting things of note. So yeah, all right, so I'm going. When you, when you get the Belle Isle Nature Center reopened, we will come do a watch party there as well. So we'll be <laughs> looking great. for yeah, that. It should be great. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for joining us. I appreciate it. And I know our audience does too. They're still making questions. Uh, uh, Ian, you got a fan. Love Ian's work, what we saw well, here. So thank you so much. <laughs> there you go, some followers. All right, thank you all so much to our audience and our co-hosts. Of course, First Fridays are brought to you by Great Lakes Now at Detroit Public Television, where I am Sandra Swoboda, the program director. Our partners here are also WDET, that's Detroit's NPR station, Planet Detroit, and Belle Isle Conservancy. And there is a map of our co-hosts around the region, public TV stations in Marquette, Erie, Watertown, New York, environmental organizations in Detroit, Circle of Blue Media Partner in Traverse City, the Belle Isle Nature Center, the Detroit Zoo, Amplify Outside, and the Detroit River Canadian Cleanup. They'll all be out on Earth Day. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like on Facebook and we will be back with the first Friday watch party next month. Until then, I'll see you out on Belle Isle.